Hello students, today we are going to be using tempera paint to paint the background of these perspective trees and shades. Beginning this project, we're gonna write our name on the back of our paper. You may notice the background has multiple colors of blue. These blues have been achieved by mixing white and black. That's called creating tint. The supply person should have gathered up the paint trays and paint brushes and doggy dishes from the counter. Although we are painting, I like to use pencil to help guide me. So let's use the pencil to draw the moon. Draw it nice and big. One large circle towards the top of your paper will do. It's okay if it's not a perfect circle, it is just a guide. Next, we're gonna use a little bit of white paint. You may notice that I am keeping the paint on the bristles and not on the metal piece of the paintbrush. Then you're going to paint in your circle. Take your time to go around the edges and fill it in fully. I've been painting for a long time and it still takes me a while to use good craftsmanship to fill in my areas when it comes to painting. Next, watch how I create a tent. I'm going to take a little bit of blue paint and each of you are going to do this yourself in one of the empty wells in your egg carton. So I am just gonna mix up some and make sure you mix up enough for you to use on your paper. So I'm making a little bit more because I didn't have quite enough paint. It should be a lighter tone of blue because you mixed white in it to create that tint. Using that color, you're going to paint around your moon. Notice how I'm very carefully painting around to try to make a very smooth application. We're keeping around the edges of the moon, not going too far out. You could then try to add a little bit of white to your paintbrush to help blend the edges around the moon. Don't go too far into the moon or you'll lose it. Now that you've completed this lighter tent, we're gonna create a little bit of a darker tent. When creating tents within a color, you add white. So to make this a little bit darker, I'm adding more blue. Make sure that this tone is darker than your first color and do the same step of painting around the edge. Keeping that rounded effect. Kind of like drawing large circles. It kind of reminds me of like a target. These are considered concentric circles. Concentric circles are circles within circles. Mm -hmm. 
Now that we've completed that step, we're going to take the raw color of paint in our tray and just using the blue paint. Let's do the same step, adding another layer of circles. Notice how I'm taking my time. And once you've completed that step, just wait for the next set of instructions. I like to blend my colors together by just kind of going on the edge where the two colors meet. And that helps blend them together a little bit. Just like that. For our final color, we are going to create a shade. Creating a shade, you need to use black and you do not need a lot of black. Just an itty bitty dot. If you get too much black, you will only end up with a black color. Black is just one of those types of colors that really take over. So just a little itty bitty dot will do. I think I even had a little too much black, so I had to add extra blue to mine. Mixing it together, and once it gets to the tone that you like, go ahead and try it out on your paper. If you think it's too dark, just add some more blue. If it's just right, awesome. Go ahead and start painting. Go ahead and use this color to fill the rest of your page. This tree is in the perspective where you're looking at it straight on. Just like all trees, the tree trunk is larger toward the ground and gets smaller as it goes up. It's kind of hard to tell from all of the foliage on this tree. Let's look at a different perspective. This perspective is as if you were standing at the bottom of the tree looking up. Notice how the bottom of the trunk looks extra large and much smaller toward the top. It's all about how the spacing between each item. The trunk at the bottom is very close to you, so it's going to look very large. The top is much further away, so it's going to look smaller. You all should now have your painted paper and your paint and paint brushes. We are gonna be using two different sized paint brushes, one larger and one small. Let's take a look at another one of those perspective trees Remember how it's bigger at the bottom and gets smaller as it comes up. We are going to use our paint and paint brush to paint on the tree. Make sure you watch me first and then I will tell you when to start. We're using the larger paint brush and dipping it into the black paint. Remember that the paint should only go on the bristles of the brush. Now watch me first. 
I'm gonna start at one corner of my paper and just paint a black line. At this time, the line is gonna be consistently the same width. That means that it's going to be the same size from one corner to the next. Go ahead and do that step now. Now, you may notice that as I keep adding some paint, I'm going to thicken up the bottom of the tree trunk. Notice that I'm staying small at the top, but just adding some fullness to the bottom. Do not go any thicker at the top of your page. Remember, we're trying to draw a tree from the perspective that you are standing at the bottom of the tree looking up. It should be about double the size at the bottom in comparison to the top of your tree. Once you complete that step, just wait patiently for the next set of instructions. Now we're ready to switch out our paintbrush for the smaller bristled brush. Watch as I demonstrate what the next steps are. You're gonna draw branches, and to do this, you're gonna press the bristles down to create a thicker line, and as you come out, you're gonna lift up on the bristles. I'm trying to make it where you can see easily. So notice that the bristles are really dragging and then I pull it up onto its tippy toes to make a thinner line. Continue to do this to create the arms for your tree. You can even thicken up the bottom edges like I just did but be sure to keep those very tops very thin. Remember, trees like to reach up toward the sky, so they should be pointing towards the top of your paper rather than facing down toward the bottom. Once you complete this step, just wait patiently. You may have noticed that we're only painting the tree black. This is called creating a silhouette. The bright moon behind is only showing the dark black tone of a tree. So a silhouette is like the outline of an object. Now, let me demonstrate how to do the little branches coming off the arms. Watch me first and then I'll tell you when to start. To do those little itty bitty branches, you want to stay up on the tippy tippy toes of your paintbrush. You may notice that as we continue, each branch becomes smaller and smaller. Do this until you complete the look of your tree. Now that you all have completed your little branches on your tree, it's time to add some snow. These are supposed to be winter-based themed trees. So using the back of your paintbrush, we're gonna use some white paint and make some dots. We are not 
splatter painting these pictures. Splatter paints are fun, but it can get on other people's clothes and that could be a bad situation. So using the back of the paintbrush, you're gonna add the amount of dots or snow that you would like to your picture. Next, we're gonna add snow to our tree, but let me show you first. Here is how you add snow to your tree, as if snow is starting to build up on the tree. We're still using the back of the paintbrush and dipping it into white. And we're just going to add these little itty bitty dots kind of close together. That way it kind of builds up a little bit of snow on top of your little tree. We are not using the bristles of our paintbrush, just the back side. Do this to all of your branches, but don't overdo it. You don't want to lose all those fun details you just created. Once you finish, take your paper on top of your messy mat and put it onto the drying rack under your class code. Now we are gonna use a pencil, an eraser, Sharpie, and red paper to create emphasis within our picture. To do this, we're going to learn how to make these little tiny cardinal birds. Notice how when I put them onto the paper, how much they stand out against the black, white, and blues. When you create something that stands out in your picture, that is called creating emphasis. If I was to make blue birds, it would not show emphasis because the blue birds would just blend in with the rest of the picture. But because these are red, they really stand out. Now using your pencil, we're going to begin this guided drawing of the cardinal. We are gonna begin by drawing the beak. So just a little V, sideways V shape. And this is very tiny. Um, look at it compared to the back side of my pencil. And then we're gonna connect that with a curved line. Next, we're gonna start at the top of the beak, creating a curve line and zigzagging down. Next, using a diagonal line, not a straight up and down line, that would be considered vertical, we wanna draw a diagonal line out. Then a curved line or a smiley line coming back into the beak. Lastly, we're going to add in the wing, drawing a line that lines up that is parallel to the back of the bird and then do the little curved lines coming up towards the face. Once you have that completed, we're going to use the Sharpie pens to trace our lines. Once you complete that step, be sure to go back in with an eraser and erase all of your little pencil lines. 
even if you think that you have them all covered, go ahead and erase a little bit on top just to be sure. Now look at these two birds. One has a little bit of a black face to it, which is pretty iconic when it comes to cardinals. So we are gonna go ahead with our Sharpie and we're gonna draw a line up and I apologize that my fingers are in the way, but you're gonna draw kind of like this shape, but we're not going to color in the beak. I think you guys can handle this part on your own. Now we're gonna draw another cardinal, but facing the opposite direction. So starting out with that beak, then we're gonna draw the curved line to connect the two pieces. Coming from the top of the beak, we're gonna come up with a curved line. And then zigzag down creating that diagonal line. This time it is going to go the opposite direction since the bird is facing the opposite way. Create that curved line or smiley line. Another line inside of the bird that is parallel with its back and then create those bumps coming up towards the face Again, trace with your Sharpie. Once you're done tracing your lines, make sure that you go back in and erase your pencil lines. And again, using the Sharpie pen, we're gonna go back in and color in the face just like this. Some of you are probably really getting the hang of how to make these little birds. If you still need some assistance, just follow along with me on the board. If you know how to do this, go ahead and draw a couple more. Maybe you want three, four, five birds. That's completely up to you. Now that we've completed making our cardinals, we're ready to cut them out. Watch how I do this. It's important that we go slow when cutting. These are very small pieces and it's easy to accidentally snip something off like the beak. So working slowly around those areas will ensure that you cut out your piece I've been doing this for a long time and this is real speed. I'm actually cutting this slow. 
and do the same for all of your birds. Once you have all of your birds cut out, it's time to map them out on your composition. It's important to make sure that it's nicely balanced. Then once we have them mapped out, we're going to glue them down with some liquid glue. It took me a little while to decide where I wanted my birds to go. Once you have your birds placed where you like them, you're gonna take the liquid glue and put a very, very small line on the back of your bird. If you put too much, it's all gonna ooze out on the sides. Place it back onto your paper and hold it down for five seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Then move on to all of your others. Be sure to hold each one down for five seconds. This allows your cardinals to have a little bit of grab time to be adhered to your picture. Once you have completed this step, you're gonna sign your paper at the bottom with a Sharpie. Sign your name in the bottom corner. Then I will collect your pictures. I hope you enjoyed this project.